guys, Ginger Cook here, and John Little is on the controls, and uh, we're bringing you the Acrylic Painting Monday. It's back, <laughs> our first show for 2022. We're sorry we missed last week, but John had to, um, issues. Had issues, but he's all better now. He's been on antibiotics for over a week, to a couple more days, and he Two doesn't days. take those, but he's feeling 100%. And we want to thank everybody who sent such lovely, kind words and well wishes. I can't and thank you and enough. Can't thank you enough. And we really appreciate that. You know, in this time of, anytime anybody gets sick, the first thing is, oh my gosh, maybe you have the big something, right? We won't say what that would be, but the big. <laughs> the big C. And it wasn't one of those C's. It wasn't one of those C's. It was just something that needed antibiotics and he was feeling terrible. And, you know, you can't do a show if the, if the film guy's gone. <laughs> <laughs> there's no show. So anyway, film guy is back. And <laughs> Ooh, the power I have. Yeah, he's back. So we're really going to have a fun show tonight. We're going to re-talk about palette knife work, and there's a reason for that, kind of inspired by by a, something I heard about today. Just And we're going to show you a, the trick to being successful in any painting is to absolutely have a total understanding in your mind of how to paint it. Because if you don't, then you kind of hope it's kind of hit or miss. You know, uh, you can only use these happy accidents for so long. You might have a couple, but then <laughs> you, can get you, away with you don't so know how you got it, if you could ever do it again. So we want to really show you some tricks on how to really cement in your mind the steps you need to paint anything, really. Cement. And we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about some exciting new um, paintings that are uh, that are coming up in uh, in our academy. Um, we're we're interested in so many things this year, and we want to share them with you. So let's get right down to it, John, and um, welcome oh, our oh, mods. Oh, wait, I can I can work the controls. He can work the controls now. You'll see I've got a little eight by ten canvas that's painted yellow. This is this is a canvas board. It's not that cardboard stuff. This is actually masonite. Masonite, and it's it's made by Jerry's Creative Mark. And it's come up that when anybody tries to order anything from Jerry's, it certainly happened for me. That's Jerry's Artorama online. One of the most frustrating things is you will find is that uh, when you go to your shopping cart, nothing's in there again. You know, you put it in the cart, it's gone, put it in the cart, it's gone. And about that time, you're going, you know, I don't want anything this badly. Well, um, our friend Judy Guitar, one of our moderators, figured out <laughs> how to actually get something in the shopping cart. And um, uh, she, she's going to add that to the comments on the side when she's talking. We're going to ask Judy to do that. Tell tell Judy tell tell everybody how how they did it, and then John will read it and tell it again because I forget what you said. But there's some <laughs> clever way to do it, and honestly, it's um, stupid to have to do that. It's stupid to have to do that, you 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 guys. And um, if I could send you to another website to buy this, I would. But you can't. You, but I can't. So this is really the best I've found. So we're using it. And why why would you want say this instead of canvas? Well, the reason is is that. Um, when you're doing a little palette knife, it's a little stiffer. Uh, it's a little bit easier to use. And you sure don't want to use palette knife on paper, or you don't want to use it on a sheet of uh, just a plain sheet of canvas, because it'll when it dries, it'll wrinkle up and all wrinkly on you and, be, and won't be effective. So, or at least that certainly can happen. So we're going to suggest that. And um, and you're saying, well, what is this? This work to also today, we're going back and celebrating artists from the past. And everybody knows about Van Gogh and Renoir and Monet. But, you know, Americans and Norwegians and English, the Brits and, and the Germans, and everybody had artists that were painting at that time and did wonderful things. This particular artist was named Hassam. And Frederick Hassam, we've done a few of his in the past. I think if you remember in our Academy, Parage, uh, Carriage Outside of Paris was one of his. So the well, entire painting is this. Now, there's not enough time in a show to do this. So what we're doing tonight, something we haven't tried before, we're going we're gonna to do a little section of this piece. And the actual reference, the total reference, both of these, the small one and the large one, will be on our acrylic painting with gingercook.com website for our orange members and above, okay? So anybody that's orange and above, uh, 
You can, if you want to paint the whole thing, you're going to know how we to do it. You're welcome to do that. Or if you just want to paint this little bit, you can do that too. All right. So that's why I'm showing you that. The other thing I wanted to show you was, um, I want you to see that this is glossy photo paper. And this is just plain, you know, paper that you might, uh, you know, send a letter with, you know, just. To, and you see that if you really want to get the colors, here's a tip. When you print, for your art, have some really good paper when you're printing out your art. Not if you're going to scribble all over it, but if you're using it for reference, a color, you know, try to get, try to print out good paper. So that's just something, you know, have the ream in your house, mark it, mine if you need to, so others don't decide, oh, shiny paper, let's use that. Uh, just make it, you know, but anyway, that will make a difference. So I'm going to put these away. We're just going to do this, okay? And Hassan was an American artist, um, and he was of uh, in part of the Impressionist in nineteen late eighteen nineteen early nineteen hundreds late eighteen hundreds Impressionist artist, and I really like this because um, this style of house with the shingles. You know, and for those of you who maybe for somewhere else in the world and don't know what at least where I grew up in Washington State, they would take these cedar shingles, instead of putting them on the roof, they would put them on the side of the house, kind of overlap and then paint them, okay? That was just a way to, you know, kind of uh, weatherproof the house. That's just a, a trick. And um, so that's what we're painting. And I'm going to show you a couple tricks on how to do that. So let's put all this away for now. We're talking about tricks tonight. Yeah, don't have a trick. And, I, and who, who are our mods here, well, John? Well, before we go into who are our mods, we did hear from Judy. Yes. On Jerry's website, while shopping, you get the choice to keep shopping or go to the cart. Use go to the cart option, not cart to the top of the page. Wow, that's complicated. So what do you do again? You're gonna, you, well, I think when you add something to your cart, go to your cart. I guess to confirm it instead of keep shopping. Okay. I always kept shopping and keep jumping the cart. Oh, how annoying. Well, all right. Well, isn't that good to know? Thanks, yeah. Judy, for, for the hours that you just you struggled to discover this. Oh, I just put, I'm telling I just you put what, an order. We have canceled orders yep. from them. Sometimes it's been so frustrating. I've got people on the phone, ended up calling them on the phone and say, I want to make this order because your website sucks. And I mean, I'm telling you what, in the world where everybody relies on websites for business, uh, um, I it's would just business. make a suggestion to them that they ought to hire somebody to fix that glitch, you know, rather than just let it go on for years. But anyway, um, that this is a good Proton canvas. I do like it. They have other products I quite like. But, you know, you got, you got to make it possible for people to, to shop. I mean, the people that really know how to shop are the Amazon folks, aren't they? And um, uh, they... Um, they absolutely are the, the best as far as figuring out how to get your money quickly <laughs> and easily. <laughs> Nothing is easier than shopping on Amazon or returning something to Amazon. Yes and yes. Where do you um, get this? Where do you get a Masonite board if you're in Canada? That would be a question for our Lynn Lynn QC up there in Canada. She might have a suggestion. You know, Jerry says not ship to Canada for whatever reason. No, they don't. And um, which we're very sorry about, but she's absolutely right. They don't. So, They're well, the then, we you know, that. in that case, probably I would use one of the, um, um, well, of course, you can go, here's a, you, well, like, you can, one time I had to do something on Mason. I, I went to, like, Home Depot, and I told, and I needed just a small, I had to get a, a very thin piece of Masonite, like a big sheet of it, like you'd put on a wall. I mean, like, 60 by something, right? And then they cut it all up for me for free into little size canvas size pieces of things I wanted to paint. Yeah, and I had my little days. stack and then you that in the old days and then they you could just so, or you could just go ahead. Here's the other thing you can do is take a piece of cardboard. If you don't have it, take a piece of stiff cardboard and put it underneath a canvas. Like for instance, so uh, under the uh, back of a canvas like this, right? Slip something stiff underneath it. And that will make a difference, too. Kind of tighten that up. Make sure you've sprayed the back of your canvas with water. Get it nice and tight. And then dry that. And then put something kind of underneath that. Because you can use canvas. Right? It's just it's, the board's just a little easier. But if you can't get the board, no worries. You know, there's uh, lots of ways to paint things. The old, and particularly if you want to do detail, too. One thing the old masters did was they painted on boards 
when they were doing detailed artwork. Did you know that? Well, they did. Absolutely. And we're, now I'm just going ahead and gridding this. Wasn't the Monet, Monet, Monet oh no, Mona Lisa's on a board. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so. It's good enough for Mona Lisa, it's good enough for us. So, in, in other words, um, and also sometimes they would use, uh, here, the, one of the reasons that people went to canvas too is because if, you, if you've seen some of those paintings in the Louvre, in some of the big art museums, they're huge. It's the size of your, you know, practically a bedroom wall, and a board would be much too heavy. So canvas, canvas was stretched. Canvases were used because it made it <clears> possible <throat> to do giant pieces. But you know, we're just talking about things. You know, you know, if you can have anything kind of stuff, you know, it would be nice to have the board. But if you don't, it's okay. Lots of different ways to get around it. Like for instance, um, tonight. We're going to be in our, we'll do the drawing for the Salvador paint kit. We'll be doing that, which is, um, uh, you know, here's your Salvador paints, right? And we'll be doing a drawing for that and also a contest for this, for those of you that live in the United States, only because um, we can't, they can't ship out outside the uh, U.S. Uh, uh, easily anymore. Posted, everything just got too prohibitive. However, there will also be, uh, we'll be drawing for a downloadable lesson, credit for downloadable lesson, and that credit. can go to anybody. So, you know. Anybody are, anywhere in the world, even on Mars. That's right. Anywhere, even on Mars, if you got internet. Well, you sure got internet. Uh, Jenny says that she has purchased things from Jerry's in can from to Canada, and you got her Proton campuses that way. Well, see, there you go. So I guess it's a hit and miss if they want to ship to Canada. Well, I guess everything is, isn't it anymore? Absolutely. Um, everything is a hit and miss. Uh, we have a terrible time getting anything to Ireland, even a letter, practically. You know, if oh, we, we want can't to, do that anymore. We can't. We can't. We so, can't even ship to Ireland anymore. Yeah, and now maybe they'll change it after COVID. Who knows? But um, does, uh, does Ginger use a Stay Wet palette? Yes, and especially tonight, we're using side two of a Stay Wet palette piece of paper. We're trying it out. We're using side two. We're going to use it, and because we're doing a little bit of palette knife, um, we're going to we're using the, our heavy body paint paints. Now, here's something you may not know. I'm going to talk to you about this. This is important. The difference between a heavy body paint and a beginner's, you know, well, let me start again. The difference between professional acrylics and beginner acrylics is huge. But also in professional acrylics, they're what we call light body, heavy body flow. So the reason we're not using Salvador paint for this is because I don't want to take the time to put gels in them. I could if I was willing to put gels in them, but because of the drying time factor, mm. I, I can't do that. So I'm using, and I'll be using probably golden heavy body and maybe some... Um, Might throw a splash if Salvador's here for colors or whatever. And but Salvador for bonus. colors, something like that. But that's the reason. Is also because um, you could certainly... Have, there's soft body and then there's kind of medium body and then heavy body paints and so that would be um but they're they all but the reason you want professional paints is because you want the pigmented colors you want the very good colors you want the pig you want the you know your times okay so here's here's our we've done a grid here you saw how i did it just to, folded this paper in half it's eight fold by ten half, in half. held it about half and then i came up with that right and then i'll do the same thing on here oh let's I'll see you fold that canvas well, no, I'm not going to do that, John. Well, you said you're going to do the same thing. I'm going to, see I'm going to draw the lines. Oh, see? that's cheating. Well, possibly so. But uh, you know what? We'll just we'll just draw the lines anyway because we can do that. We can. All right. So we could measure. I could just do this if I wanted to just be fun. Oh. John just hates it when oh. I do stuff like this. I'm going to say, here we go. Cringe, Here's a cringe, dot. Cringe, cringe, cringe. The sock folder in him. This makes him nuts. Cringe, oh, you're cringe. already a quarter inch off there. There you go. No, it's I'm off. not. I'm not off. Well, maybe a little kind of off. But <laughs> it's a little bit, but okay. Who's going to notice it in an impressionistic it, painting? Yeah, only impressionistic me. painting, you're not really going to notice. Just Andrew just and I would be the only ones that will notice it. Okay, fine. You and Andrew can just huddle Down together, yeah, we right? Know. Now, hey, so uh, Mr. Art is back in the house. Art Thomas is back among the living. Oh, good. I'm so glad. You know, I think about you all the time, Art, because your beautiful painting is 
that Art, you know, sent John a, since John a could never get me to paint a tractor, Art mm -hmm. painted him a gorgeous tractor, and it's hanging in his office. So we think right of you every you time it. we go upstairs, John. Right there. Uh, see it. Art. And uh, we absolutely do. Yeah, okay, that's... Boop. And... Doop. Well, this is a little T-square. You want to line it up like that. Okay. All right, so there we go. Oh, that looks good. Yeah, that's close enough. All right, that's so good. now... Now, here's the thing. We're going to do some doors and windows. And in the alert, the, the, the everything is kind of going off at this angle. They're not straight across. But we know that, for instance, um, right about here, there's a door. This is the shutter for the door. I'm coming down here like that. And it goes down. I'm going to move this up a bit so I can see where. Just a little bit under here like that. There's door number one. That's the shutter. And it just it's coming up kind of at a little angle like that. And then this well, it goes up actually higher than that. It actually comes all the way up here. And this one comes up higher. And then this is coming across here like this. And then down and another shutter. So you've got another shutter coming down here. You know, it doesn't go that far, but here it is. Okay. And then you've got... Um, uh, inside and the inside of this shutter is kind of here like that, and then you've got a um, up above here you've got a door. I think this has to come up a little higher. And just you know you could trace it on, but you can see how you can just pretty just kind of put what's in the squares, right? Because there's not much to this, and then you've got a window over here like that that's coming down it doesn't come all the way down to the middle of the painting then like a little bit of a shutter right here and um there you go so there's there, this is the bottom of your 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 window under here that's coming up about like that so you've got this window now what you can do rather than just have if you need a you, you kind of want straight lines so once you've kind of decided where that is you can straighten these lines up if you want never a terrible idea okay yeah you can do that but basically and then we know down here on our path i'm going to bring the path up a little further because um uh because i've changed the picture a little bit so i'm going to bring the path up further and uh, basically, I know that um, there's um, there's a bunch of foliage coming up, eh, kind of like that. And this is pretty pretty simple. So that's how we're we're doing that. Let's get off the, the lid for this. Our say wet palette. And I I want to put um, I did the yellow background because that's kind of the color underneath the color. So we want. Um, I think we want a um, an ultramarine blue and combination of ultramarine blue and thalo. I think is what we want. So I'll put some of that out. And we're not going to do palette knife on the whole thing, but we will do some palette knife on it. And you don't have to palette knife the whole painting to be effective. You can just here's a little bit of the blue here. I have Smurf fingers now. Um, for those of you who don't know, that is a cartoon. Smurf. Who's a cartoon? Smurfs were cartoon. You thought they were real? Yes. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Nobody telling about Christmas either. Okay. All right. So. What? What about Christmas? Uh, again, we're using side two of a wet stay wet palette. Okay. Yeah, side two of a stay wet palette. Paper. See. The paper right there it goes yep. over the sponge. Let me let me just clean off my fingers here while I can uh, before I spread the paint everywhere. Hey, we'd like to uh, thank the moderator for in the house today. Looks like we have moderator Mona in the house today, and Lynn QC out of the Quebec office, and Steffi who had uh, negative twenty two degrees and not over zero today. Oh, I feel bad for you as I'm sitting in fifty nine degree weather. Yeah, and I want to shout out to any of our friends up in the Washington State that are undergoing a lot of wet weather. My family lives up there, and um, well, I, what's left of it, you know, it sounds terrible, but 
you know, there's a lot of family members up in Washington State. I don't think they're in the flooding area. I don't doubt if they even watch the show, but if they did, I, any of you else that are up there, you know, that are getting deluged with rain and we have snow in other parts of the country, it's been a, it's been a winter that we're all going to start remembering, isn't it? So um, I want to take a, a brown Posca pen. Uh, I think that's one of these. This is a paint marker pen by Artisto. Let's see what that, that was good because I don't think it comes off. Yeah, that's even better. And I want to just, here, before I do that, let's just do this. Oh, do what? Do this. Do what? Okay, so I didn't I have that pencil? pencil. Yeah. All right, so you'll notice that there, there's these um, kind of, and see these are going up. They're, they're going up like that. They don't, yeah. So there's these kind of lines that are going this way. And I'll just put a few of these in like that. There's not that many here, but we'll just put a couple of these in here. You don't even see them on the right. So there's a little bit of these shingles here that will, because this, this particular, okay, so this, I'm trying to decide what this is. Let me, get, let me have the big picture again. <laughs> Uh, again, I don't even sure. It really helps. All right, so now I got it. Okay, so now this is the door. We'll put a big D here, yes. And this is the top of the door. A big D for this the door. Is the, the, this is the open part of the door because the door happens to be open, okay? And it's black. It's dark inside, and it's actually kind of squared off here. We'll square that off. And then, so then, then it comes down like this, and this is... Oh, guess what? This is another window. Okay, I see it now. Not a shutter at all. Now, I feel like Mrs. Magoo sometimes when I paint stuff because I have to look, right? But all right, so that's that's this. And that goes, this line goes, aha. Uh -huh. Now this is important. Which line, way does this line go? It goes up this way. These are going down. This is going up. You see this, you guys? This is going down. This is going up because they're going to a vanishing point off the canvas. So this line's going up like that and um there we go so we're just and then there there's your shut there's your house okay so this window's a little more cramped than this one interesting don't know why it's that way but here's the inside of that window maybe we're seeing that more okay whatever it is we're not um we're not selling the house we're just painting the house how's that so if if our windows are slightly different than his Nobody's going to know. Nobody's going to know and nobody's going to care, right? All right. So put the palette knife. These are the palette knives I'm going to be using. I'll put those out of the way and put the little pens out of the way. And uh, let's start with them. Um, let's put out some, keep putting out some paint here. Why I'm doing that, I want to give a shout out to um, the Brazewood uh high school um and let's see and how how let's see yeah in, in yeah Braisewood, texas and it's it's the high school and i want to shout out to their art teacher um leanne dry um she she teaches uh, art there and one of her ninth grade students is the daughter of one of our uh moderators on facebook becky and um and so during class she was asked to um to paint, to do a palette knife painting. And the painting they picked was one of our YouTube paintings of the rooster. And Great so, lesson. which is indeed, if you haven't seen that palette, if you, we have a whole playlist of just palette knife artwork for on YouTube, if you want to check it out. And that rooster was one of the early ones we did. And she, and, it, and we had, a, we had had the privilege of meeting um, this young lady and, uh, Abby McDonald, we got to say, say hi, Abby. I think she may be watching. I got to meet her, go to the art museum in Houston when the Van Gogh was, exhibit was here uh, a few, couple years ago. And there was a picture of her. So we wanted to just thank the, thank all the, you know, thank the art teachers around and particularly uh, 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 the uh, Bracewood High School art teacher, Leanne. Uh, thank you for you know watching our show and, and passing on the knowledge because that's what we're about. It's passing it on. And thank you very much for that. And hi, you guys. All Can't that. take it with you. 
can't take it with us, so thanks for passing it on. Hey, we do have a new staff member while she's setting out the paints. Let's uh, bring up our newest staff member. We now have a health care. There, there he is. Oh, up there, up there's the camera. There you go. This is Doc Rock. And he comes all the way from the uh, Wisconsin area, and he's a lot happier being down here where it's warmer. So thank you very much for adding to the Stuffy staff. That's Doc Rock, our newest staff member in charge of health. Health and well-being. Absolutely. That is so nice. And we want to thank uh, Steffi for sending that to us. Or to John. But it's good, yeah, because then yeah, John, the minute much. we got that, he got so much better. And that Instantly. just shows you, doesn't it? Tell you what the stuffy staff can do for you. Cad red. All right, so there's our paint. Salo blue, ultramarine blue, cad red, magenta, yellow oxide, ca yeah, cad yellow, medium, burnt umber, burnt sienna, titanium white, and zinc white. We'll start with that. If we need more stuff, we'll get it, right? As needed. As needed. Pretty much our primary our primary. Pretty palette. much we use that all the time. People say we should put your colors down. We use the same colors all the time. So the first thing I'm going to do is take a little burnt umber and that's ultramarine that's blue, and I'm going to paint in my door because I know I know that's for sure. Always ask yourself, what do I know for sure? Well, I know for sure there's this dark door here. <laughs> I'm using a Bristol on a short handled handled angle brush. Three quarter inch. Three quarter inch. And it does not have any water on it. It is going right over the this um there. Okay, so, so I'm painting that in. Okay, then I'm gonna take that same brush and I'm just gonna just do the um couple of the little dark spots that come up here like that. I think for, for instance there's something right there. And um yeah, I'm gonna come along our trail here and do that. Happy on this side of the trail. Okay. Again. Now let's see, how about over here in our, our, our this window? I think I want a little dark, maybe just a little dark here in this window. A little bit of dark right here. Just a few little tabs of dark paint. And um, let's just kind of outline these windows a little bit with this. As long as we're, you know, as long as we're here, right? We still have the lines, yeah? We'll just do... A little bit of that. We don't. We probably end up covering up a lot of these, but right now we're just going to do some of that. And um, let's take a little bit of this blue and brown and just come above here like that. Make that a little bit darker here. Maybe something a little darker around our door. And I'm going to take a little phthalo blue now, and a little bit of white, and a little bit of yellow oxide. And more white, and I'm going to make this sort of soft blue color. And I'm just going to come up over here like this and just paint this in here because this is the color this is going to be. I don't have to get too um, precise here. There it is. And let's take a little bit of zinc white now and just drag over it. Now, look, just no water on the brush. I'll hold the brush flat and drag that over and just kind of skip around. Okay. So there you go. You skip around that. And as long as I'm in that color, let's paint the door this color too. Here we go. Now, one thing about it, the Stay Wet palette has a bit of moisture in it. So if you weren't using one, you might have to use a damp brush. But use the Stay Wet palette because this is wet here. This paper is wet. It acts like, like it's giving me a damp brush. Yes? Did that make sense? Everybody? Yes? Oh, absolutely. It does, right? Clear as mud. Okay, so there you go. So we just, here's our here's our open door. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to get the white, drag it on here. Just hold it so flat, drag it on there. We can do another coat later, but there you go. And then we'll just do something like this. Here's a question we haven't heard in a while. What is the difference between zinc white and titanium white? Uh, zinc white is a is like looking through wax paper, and titanium white is let's try, is opaque like a door. So when you use zinc white, you you can get a little bit of transparency with it. Mainly really used for fog and, and it, distancing, it, atmospheric perspective, clouds. Yeah, let's make this a little darker here, a little gr darker green here. 
Um, here we go. Let's just make this a little bit darker right next to this door here. Okay, so here we go. So I've kind of got this going here. Pretty good, right? And I've got, so all I have so far, which is not real impressive, I understand that, is I've got a door and uh, part of the door, you know, yeah, a door, a door, door opening. Open, opening for it and the blue and wall. That, and the blue wall. That's all I got. And when people start to paint, it, it's like building a house. You ever had a friend build a house and build a new house and invite you over and say, you got to see my new house. Now, it's not done yet. They've just got a few sticks up in the air and some <laughs> concrete. And they say, this is going to be the kitchen. And the big refrigerator is going to go here. And there's my picture window. And isn't this gorgeous? Now, they've seen the entire plans for the house. You're just looking at some sticks going. And you're polite. You're going, oh, gosh, this is going to be so nice. You are clueless of what they're building, right? And you have no reference to it. And whatsoever. this is the same kind of thing. We just got the sticks up in the air, right? So if somebody comes along and says, Why are you painting? That's why people don't like to paint in public. You show that? Because they don't want to have to answer about the sticks, right? But we're, we're going to do that. Sorry. We're right. going to answer the sticks. We're going to answer about the sticks. Okay, so let's go back to our blue again, a little bit of white. Hey, we'd like it, to thank Sharon for the donation that came in through PayPal. Thank you, Miss Sharon. Glad you are feeling better, John. Thank you. I am. Thank you, Sharon. That's very nice. In the description, we do have other ways of accepting donations now. We have Venmo and Zella. Information is in the description towards the top below this video. Now, what you're seeing me do here is take some white thalo blue and a little yellow oxide. And I'm going to very gently just sort of start dragging some paint down like this and it gets as i get over this area it's kind of lighter just dragging the paint down on the flat of the brush like that okay and then as i get closer to the to where the house is up here we're going to get a little bit brighter and i'm just going to come down here and just drag the paint down like that okay all the brush strokes are vertical and here we go just and some of the yellow is going to show through and that's just fine with us Okay, we're going to do that again. Here's our uh, old, here's our window here. And we really don't see much in this window here. This one's just, everything's all blue. Now, when you end up doing the whole painting, you're going to see these, win all his windows are slightly different, but that's this one. We'll do the same one over here too. Just sort of paint that, put a little white with it like this. The, the, the windowsill edge of it, the mullions, is that what they call this edge of the frame around the window? It's a little bit lighter, so we just add this all pretty much in the same colors, right? So this is window, and then you've got a sill here like that. And um, you don't see much more of this window it because we've got some flowers in the way, but we'll go ahead and at least put them the same height, okay, like that. There you go. All right, so that's our, uh, those are these windows. Now the right side of the picture is kind of in the greens, so I'm going to take more white and add a little yellow oxide to this mixture. And now I'm going to start dragging. Let's see, let's put a little bit of yellow in it. So we get kind of a yellow oxide, white, and phthalo blue, okay? And we're going to just start mixing greens. And let's see, let's get some zinc white with that. There we go. And uh, I want it a little more yellow. So let's add some yellow to that, some cad yellow medium, a little bit more zinc white because that's more transparent. And I'm going to start dragging down color down here. And as we get down toward the, under under this area, we're going to do a little bit lighter. But everything is coming down like that. It's just really, and this is the kind of painting that requires layers. So, um, um, so you get, you get these, these different tones based on, the um, you know layers of what you're painting, okay. And uh, just uh, see how I'm doing here. Gonna make this window just a little bit thinner. Got this a little wide. There you go. Add a little bit more white paint there down like this. Okay. 
and uh okay so you know so far so good yeah and you're going well gosh doesn't look like much nope sure doesn't but that's okay and and it's just understanding where it has to be before it's somewhere else just don't quit too soon some of you have you know i do personal art coaching for our members of the academy and a lot of um you know have the option of sending something in to me and a lot of times I see where people have just stopped Sue's to they spend a lot of hours on it. Oh, I gotta ask Ginger. I'm not done yet. Gotta ask Ginger. And I don't mind you asking Ginger, for goodness sakes. Ask Ginger. That's perfect. Okay, so I think people struggle with getting through the ugly stage. Yeah, but you know, don't don't quit too soon on us. Okay, so we here's some green that's gonna separate these two guys from there. Okay. Some green that's separating that door. From all of this and then there's some light blue here that um, goes around this door right here like that there you go and uh there you go it's so keep keep layering on here we go like that layering i know it's a little bit wider around this window right in here so i'll layer in some more color barely touching it people say how much pressure very little now, the rest of this in here is going to be different colors of green. So let's just start with some ultramarine blue and um, yellow oxide. And uh, let's just, at least this far, maybe a little bit of white with that and yellow. Let's just, um, well, more yellow maybe and white. There you go, because my brush is kind of dirty. I'm just going to start around here like that and uh, do like little X's or whatever. Yeah? And just cover up the bottom of this so we all that's just our next little underpainting layer of color okay everybody's with me on that a little bit of x's here like that i don't just xxx king's x did you ever say that john king's x probably girl thing probably didn't great looking colors so you see we're we're getting Let's get a little bit greener. Ultramarine blue and yellow oxide will make more of an army green. You can also use black and yellow to get a pretty good army green, um, which is fine. Here we go. We're going to just keep doing this. Just a little bit of excess. And again, we're layering. Like that. All right, so already we're getting a little closer to our goal of our house and our shingles and all that stuff. And let's see, is there any of this I could drag down? Can I drag any of this color down? Because this up top, up top has had a chance to kind of dry. So if I barely touch it, maybe add some zinc white, barely touch it. Ooh, too much paint. Too much paint. See that big glob of paint? Didn't want all that. Once I want paint, but not that much. So sometimes what you have to do is put the paint on the brush and wipe it off, which is harder for some of you than others. You just can't stand the idea of putting the paint on the brush and then wiping it. Any questions, John? Questions, my dear. Questions. No, no questions. All right. So I'm going to get some yellow oxide up here, and this is our path. I'm just going to paint that in with some yellow oxide. Okay. All right. So far, so good. Yes and yes. Nothing nothing too scary here, right? Oh, we see a couple of people are using our new methods of donations. We appreciate that. Renee, I believe that's how you say your name. Thank you very much for your donation that came through the Zella system, Z-E-L-L-E. -E. Wow, and then we also had one come in from Vivian through the Venmo, V-E-N-M-O. Thank Again, you. Again, descriptions are in... How to do them are in the description below. I also okay. posted a little bit ago. Cool. Thank you. Thank you, both ladies. And here's the thing about the donations. Let's just take a moment. We're in our new quarter, and anybody in the three-month period that accumulates at least $100, for every $100 of donations, they get, they, they're they entered into a special um, drawing. Into a special fishbowl. Into a special fishbowl, which will be the 28th of February is when this quarter will end. We'll, we'll, we'll probably, in February, we'll be traveling a little bit 
And so our we will not be doing live shows. We'll be doing semi-live. We'll be on with you, but it'll be like a premiere thing. So, I'd love to so in Mar and so March will be the actual drawing, but the the um the the, the um But this time we're doing something a little different. We're doing something a little different. We thought it would be nice. I'm just letting all that dry here. We thought it would be nice to give you guys a choice of of uh four paintings. Um let me put this one away. Um to have a pick from. So um it was our theme this this quarter is water. So here's a, a one of our paintings of our of a river with the um uh uh the rocks and all this. And this is part of a diptych. And so what's um, a diptych you this might is say? part of the diptych, and I probably have to give you both sides to that when I see that. So it'll be, I'll show you what the, that next week. It'll be a diptych, right? And there'll be, a, there's a fisherman on the other side, right? So that's kind of special. So we, you know, we appreciate the fact what you guys are doing, really do. And then whenever I do a, like a palette knife painting, if I can, I try to do a smaller version so that um, I understand where I'm putting my lights and darks before I actually start doing heavy, thick palette knives. So this particular lesson of Venice from is uh, it was just one of our one of my first um, sketches, and it's one of my favorites. I really love this. That's going to be a, that that'll be a possibility. And, and then some of you who really like palette knife, I wanted to show you this. This is our wave and water one. This was a this is a tutorial we have in our wave and water master class, or our blue members membership or purple. And this is again palette knife work with the rocks and the water. But almost the whole thing was done with the palette knife this particular technique. So many different ways to learn to paint something. So important to um, to understand the different things and the because you then you can combine. You can use a palette knife here, a little bit of brush here. You can combine. And then finally one this I love this one. This is a um, from one of our uh, again a part of a painting done by one of our artists from the past. This is a Wave and Water Masterclass one an oval. So you will have the choice of of we we'll have three winners. Uh, we'll have three winners, but e but the last winner will have a, the choice of at least two paint of uh, two paintings. Okay. Instead of just getting left. Instead over. of just whatever's left, you'll have a choice of two. So we have the um, rocks, the palette knife, Venice, and then this will be a diptych, and I will find the other half since we're doing this. They have to go together, you guys. So it'll be the diptych. Okay. So again, thank you very much for people, you guys, for helping us out with that. Again, so we're doing the quarter from well, this is running December, January, and February. So through February, every hundred dollar donation, you get a ticket in the fishbowl. Yes. All right. So now I'm going to take. I want to put the shutters in. So I'm going to take some ultra. One of the, if you're not using black, ultramarine blue and brown are very good with that. And these almost could be green. So let's put a little bit of yellow with that. Let's make it kind of a more of a green. Put a little bit of the yellow in that color. So we've got a very, very dark green. So I want to come up here like this and um, just suggest these uh, shingles here. You don't draw lines all the way across. If you'll notice how he did them, um, they're just they're just almost almost like little use. He just um he just implied them without without actually you know having them there. In other words it would be had gotten very busy if he'd have said that this was all shingles. Alright. So we want to make sure that we have this dark right here between this door and that. Okay. So I wanted to put, I wanted to just show you how you might do these. This is all going to be a bush up here. And then this is also how we're going to do some of the detail on our, uh, you could use a Posca pen, you know, there's no, no rule that says you can't. Um, here you go. Here's our windows. And uh, the same thing here, we've got, um, here, I'm going to put these lines in here for the windows. And just you don't have to have a continuous line. That's something people think you've got to do. Is just start here and then end. You can you can have what I would call an interrupted line, 
where you suggest that there's something there. It, it's like if you ever left the the, um, the vowels out of a sentence and you can still read it, it's the same kind of thing. People will still read the line. Their mind will con connect it. Even you don't, The brush doesn't have to. That's really important stuff, by the way. That's the kind of stuff you really need to know. So this is up here like this above the door. Like that. This door is coming out a little further here. And uh, we're just going to say there's the edge of this door here. All right. And um, I want something dark in this window right here. So sometimes you can use a bit of dark paint or dark color to, you know, suggest something's there just by the color. Okay. And then if you want to, like, for instance, I don't really don't enjoy this crooked door. So if I did this said I like this line here. Here, let's just do that. Okay. There. Just just wanted that at least one edge kind of straight. Okay, so now what? Well I'm gonna take um just some zinc white and then I guess there's a little green on it. I'm gonna flatten it out and wipe most of the paint off. And I want to come over my, just flatten it out, see, wipe it off and just flatten out the brush and just sort of layer over some of this lighter color. And it's really that simple. Just tap off the excess so you're not doing globs. If nothing happens, get a little more paint because it depends on how thin you've made it. Okay, and just, just overlap. This has had a chance to dry enough where you want to just overlap some of these colors like that. And uh, particularly this part up here was lighter. I'm going to add that. And this part in here was lighter. And there was some light parts on some of this. I think it's pretty light right here by the window. I think I'm almost going to do some titanium white there. Okay. A little bit of light right here. Okay. Some light on my door here. Uh, light blue here. Like that. And my door has been opened. I'm sure that's just because a couple of things you have to have painted fairly well, and this door would be one of them. Because you want it, you want that to it's got a little bit of a light line on top here, like that. Not as light as that, but maybe just a little bit of that. Pull it down. And you've got a little bit of light coming up on the top of this. And a little bit here. Okay. And, uh, okay. And then I think I've got a little green down in here, even on the door, where uh, he's put a little green down here. So I'll add another color down here, too. And maybe some light green, which would just be that same green with a little white in it, on the edge of this door right here. Now, look, look where my finger is. And I'm on my wrist is doing this. So I'm just and I'll just move my shoulder back and add that line. You see, I'm not I could go all the way down, but I can do like these little swings of brush, right? Like that. And then um I can do the same thing with um with this right here too. I'll just say here's some little light blue. I'll just just kind of refine that. And I think it really is more of an ultramarine blue. It's slightly different than the other colors. Ultramarine blue is more of a, it's the ultramarine blue, uh, you know, red shade. And uh, let's do a little bit of dark up here like that. There we go. So, all right. So we've got a door. We've got some windows. We've got a little bit of light coming. So this is so fun because, you you know, when you're when you're doing one of these old dead guys, you've got the, um, you have the advantage of um, the um, you have the advantage of of the fact that he told you where to put the colors. That's so easy. It's just so easy. And you, now you're just deciding how to paint it, right? So let's do this. Which can be a challenge. Yeah. So that's all we're doing. It's just deciding how to how to paint it. We're not doing anything too tricky here. Nobody's nobody's um advocating trickiness. We're just going to add a few little bits of lights and darks in a couple places so that we're happy with that. So I still want this 
a little bit lighter here than I had it on the edge of the door. Okay, so there you go. So now what I want to do is I want to add all the flowers. And um, that that will be nice and easy to do. And just we'll put a few of these lines back uh, up here too. I want this something up here on this one. Okay, so we're gonna take up. We're gonna do a palette knife for that. And um, I've got. A, I want a little one. Okay, I want a little tiny one. So something like this is good. I want something with a. And this has got a pointed edge. This is more round. I think I want more of the rounded edge one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scrape up a little bit of yellow and green, make a dark green color. Okay, just make some dark green. And I want to come up here like this and just. Um, gonna just come up here like this and add some darker um, colors okay you can see that there's some and it's just there and then I want some lighter colors so I'm going to take some white and yellow scrape that together and make a lighter green okay and I want to do Let's see, a little bit more yellow and a little more white. Notice how I'm doing the side of my brush like it, like that. There you go. Just kind of, I don't want to mix it too much because I want a variation of greens in here. And I'm just going to tap it on here like that. And um, say that there's some leaves coming down here. Now, you could use some modeling paste in this if you wanted it to, to be a little bit heavier. But you'd have to dry stuff in between. Let's see, see how this is a little bit brighter. It's coming over the top of this door. Let's um, let's take some phthalo blue and yellow and make a different green. Okay. And we want to put a little bit of cad red in it because we want to gray it. See, we don't want a bright green. We'll put a little bit of cad red in it. Tone that down a bit. And maybe a little bit of magenta. Let's try that. I just want this a little bit darker than I've got it. All right, so I know that I want some of these. Okay, so here you go. Here's another way to make dark green. Just on the tip of this. And I'm suggesting it's coming over this door like that. Here's a question from Lily. Sure. Concentrate on the dark layer, adding lighter layer, or back and forth? Well, it depends, Lily. You know, where do you start with the? Usually when I'm doing foliage, I start with the darkest color first. And then I, um, I add the light. But it depends on each picture. So when I'm looking at this, I'm trying to determine what was the color underneath the color underneath the color. All right? So that's what I'm looking for. So um, here, you can see where I'm sort of, if I'm, I'm mixing this up here, and I'm using a lot of paint, all right? You can see that I'm using a lot of paint. I'm coming under here like this. And because I haven't put any gel in it, I can probably um, uh, pretty easily, um, a little bit of burnt umber in this green, Make it a bit darker. Okay, a little bit of more blue. Burnt umber is another way to get a good dark green. A little for bit of somebody that just received or got some modeling paste for the first time, do you have any first time tips for them? Yeah, um, uh, you can mix it up to 50% with color. Um, you can add it, for instance, if, you know, one thing that's kind of fun about modeling paste is that you can, uh, for instance, if you were painting rocks, you can take that modeling, you can draw the rocks out and kind of do a little texture with modeling paste, let that dry and then paint your rocks over it. Maybe dye, you know, tint the modeling paste, maybe a dark brown or dark gray color, which is the darkest color in your rocks and then go from there. Some great things you can do with this. Okay, so you see how I'm coming up here with this palette knife. 
And um, I know that we've got, um, again, if I was using modeling, when this dries, it will dry a little flatter than it would if I were not using, if I were using modeling paste like that. So I know the darkest part of this green right here is uh, going to be up here by the door. But then they've got some lighter green, so you want to have to be able to get both. There's some lighter green right here on the edge, because wherever there's a light, there's a dark. Yeah, so right where the door is, there's a little bit of light. Okay, so just a little bit of and light right does, there. How does modeling paste differ from gel medium? Um, gel medium is clear, and it dries clear, particularly if you get a gloss gel medium, it dries clear. And um, modeling paste dries uh, opaque. So, um, you, for instance, you can take clear modeling paste. Suppose you had an old print in the house that you liked, you know, maybe something on paper. You actually take gel, and if it's stretched or flat, flat you know, it's not going to wrinkle on you. And uh, use a brush and, you know, pretend like you're painting it. When it dries, it'll it'll leave the brush marks in the in the um, in the uh, picture see what I'm doing here like that let's see I'm just using a, and so for some some people have, you know are just a little reluctant to do this and uh, but I'm just using the tip of this I think any of you could could do that you just want to change directions you know have some leaves going up and some going down and kind of twirl them around and uh, you notice I'm just leaving it on the tip okay like that I want some of this lighter color and some white here. What's some lighter color? There's some lighter yellows in here. Here, I guess we'll take some white with that. This here's some lighter color right here. And I know I want some lighter color in here. Don't get too globby on yourself. Just just do a little bit like that. Okay. Take some white and yellow. Let's come on up here. White, mostly white with a little bit of yellow. Okay. And I know Primarily, that, when would you use your modeling paste and heavy gels? What's the main purpose? Well, I think they, um, you know, for instance, acrylic paints dry very flat. And so if you use something like there's a product that Matisse makes, and we have it in a jam jar right now, but it's called um, <laughs> Impasto, and it's sort of an in-between modeling paste and gel. And it's really nice because it gives, if you add it to your paint, it, it keeps your paint from drying so flat. It gives so a body. It just, it, yeah, it, it's a good way to get texture. Um, Basically, you're giving it more of the oil, old-time oil painting feel. Yeah. For instance, if you just put a big, if you were oil painting and put a big glob of paint on there, it, oil paints will crack. So they have to, what they call thick to thin. They go real thin and they keep adding layers. So they can keep so they don't just plop it all at once because otherwise it will crack. But you can get some thick. You've seen maybe you've seen oil paints that are. Uh, uh, Kent Wallace is an art, but probably a wonderful art American oil painter. And uh, some years ago, a lot of his prints were in IHOP, International House of Pancakes and Paste. Someone's wondering what that is. Uh, and. Um, the other reason you you know anyway he hit some of his oil paints were like that thick i i i went to a gallery one time at one of his shows in dallas and um i was so very impressed uh with that and uh his artwork was just that came in crates it couldn't touch anything it was still wet when we were looking at the paintings the thing of it is is i don't know how he did them or how thick they were but they were beautiful right and that's one of the reasons that you, um, you know, people, you know, you can get that same effect with acrylics using modeling paste. Now I'm into the blue greens here a little bit. I've added a little more phthalo blue. And I'm adding some blue greens here too. And again, I'm just sort of tapping in the colors. And um, just, just dropping them, just dropping them off the tip, just using that much of the tip dropping them and doing about four um, strokes and then getting more, getting more paint, just scraping and like that, right? And this, 
you know, um, people say, well, when do you know to do this? Well, you, it's very nice to have dimensions in your artwork and modeling paste and, and gels and stuff. You do this on, on a foliage. It, it just is a nice, it's just a nice technique. How's that? Nice technique. And don't overmix. Here's one of the keys here. Don't overmix the colors. All right. And you know you've got some some you colors flop and, here. Flop and go. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't overmix. Uh, so that when you put it out on the um, canvas, it's um. It, it, you've got all these beautiful colors in it. Do you see what I mean? Now, if you keep going and you don't dry, it doesn't dry, at some point, you will end up with just one color. So you have to be kind of careful not to keep going back over stuff. But uh, for instance, um, here's some white and yellow oxide. A little bit of yellow. Okay. And I want something kind of light on my um, path. I'm just going to plop this on here like that using the flat of my brush or my palette knife just flat, flat tap 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 some of that other stuff is going to show through and I've got a lighter little bit of a lighter path uh, it uses a lot more paint than um, if you were just using a brush the same amount of paint that you would use on a palette knife will um, uh, be just, you know, 10 times more than if you were painting this with a paintbrush. So then what do you do? Okay, so that's the question. What do you do? Well, you can add gels up to 50%, as we talked about, up to 50% in gels, and that will allow um, for... Um, uh, it's uh, gels and our modeling paste is cheaper than paint, so it's also economically a, a good way to do it too. Okay, but then you've increased your drying time by about uh, twenty four hours. Yes. You have to have a lot of patience. So, you know, maybe you've got two or three paintings going at once and you just come back to them, right, as, as time permits. For instance, um, here we go. Let's just scrape all this up off of this. Maybe I want to take this my brush now and come down like this on my... Catherine would like to know how many cookies would you classify this particular lesson? Well, I think it's a one in the fact that we're just showing you how to use the knives. Right, you see how I'm taking the knife at the edge and then just scraping down up here on some of this, right? Or taking the knife right here at the edge and scraping down this door here. See that? See how I scrape that door down and then maybe I'll take some white over it like this. You can frost a cake, you can do this. I'm too busy eating the frosting. I know. Just John doesn't want to give up the frosting. Okay, see that? So now we just keep back. But again, like I say, it uses a lot of paint. Like, for instance, we're out of yellow already, and we're out of yellow oxide. And this is the reason we use the gels, because it stretches your paints. Yeah, it stretches your paints besides giving you texture, right? And so the trick is, if I was doing flowers, I'd want gels because... Because if you don't mix them 50%, if you say do five, you can tint them so that it's almost like crystal. You can look through the flowers and they have almost have this crystal-like effect, like stained glass. So that's, you know, so you what you ought to do is experiment with some gels and modeling paste on something that, not a painting, just on a little something. Just pick a little something out and experiment with it and say, okay, so what could I, what could I do with this? How would I uh, paint this? Getting some, a little bit more of the yellow oxide now into here. Take a little bit of white with that. Okay. And say I'm going to come down in here like this with something lighter. Maybe something light growing over the 
Now, if I want it to be, I want something light coming over my, I see, look, I can take the, the this and I'm going to go over my path right here like that. Like that's like some grass is growing over it. So you can, you can, you can, you have direction if you need it. I want something a little darker in the greens here. A little bit of brown and blue, right? So I want something a little darker in here. Maybe a few, the a few donations come in, like to recognize those folks for their contributions to a worthy cause. Uh, Chad, which I don't believe is who it really is, but I believe it's the other half of Chad. Thank you very much for your donation. Also, Eric used the new Zella system. Thank you very much, Eric. That works great. There's no cost at all when you're using Zella or Zoom or Vimeo, Venmo. No cost involved at all. And thank you very much for Joan for your donation. And we have one more from Catherine. Thank you, each and every one of you. Oh, yeah. Thank you, guys. Really, really, from the bottom of our heart, we want to thank you very much. Um, it's very, very nice of you to do that. And we appreciate it very much. I know there were a few people that got scholarship over Christmas. And we're going to encourage everybody on the new website to um, to go uh, log into personal art coaching. If you're a red, purple, or blue member, even if you don't intend to use it, please log in and fill out the bio form. The, the you know uh, we have a form where I want to know about you. Who are you? Uh, what are your painting goals? Because I'll read that. And even if you never send me in, send me in. If you don't want the personal art coaching, send me your pictures anyway. I want to see what you're painting. And, and I want to hear your comments about what kind of stuff you want in, in future lessons. We have over 500 videos from beginner to advanced artists in our academy, and we grow them every week. Okay, it's just, there we go. So something like that, right? Now, I need to dry this. John, can you do a drawing from... I can, um, yeah. If you guys uh, remember last... Um, last... Uh, the last video we did on YouTube was this one with the little guy fishing and the kind of everything in peaches. And we have a drawing that goes with this. There'll be a $50 uh, downloadable um, credit on our website. And um, that's for any lesson we have. It's $50. Some of them are, a lot of them are under $50. But if you, anyone, you'll have at least $50 credit. And then we'll also have the Salvador paint set that we'll be drawing for. And that will be just for people that entered in the United States, right? And thank Salvador Paints for doing that very much. Okay. All right. I'm going to dry this. I'm going to mute you. Ha! Ah, got rid of her. Let's go over to our browser here. And we got to get our link. This is from our Pink Beach Sunset. Copy the link, and I believe the hashtag was Pink Beach. We'll do the Pink Beach winner first. That person will be receiving a $50 certificate for downloadable lessons. to be applied for any of the downloadables they would like to purchase. And specific text is hashtag Pink Beach. How many Pink Beach people did we have? We had 70. And the winner of the $50 certificate is Shirley Major. So Shirley Major, you have 10 days to notify us or to contact us to claim your $50 certificate. Let's go ahead and do the Salvador paint kit while we've got the moment. Salvador, it's called Salvador kit. And again, we're sorry to say this is only for the U.S., continental U.S. anymore because of shipping issues. And the winner of the Salvador kit is Letty Saga. Uh, wait a minute, Sorgi, Sorgi. I believe she's won before, but she keeps entering, she keeps winning. So again, you've got uh, 10 days to notify me through the Contact Us form that you are a winner of the Salvador kit. And surely you have won the $50 certificate for the downloadable lesson. 
Thank you for everyone that participates. To participate in that, all you do is after the video has posted and we're done with the live show, you'll come back in and you'll make a comment. And then you have to put in the hashtags where the hashtags are. And the hashtags for this week will be Old House and Salvador Kit. And we'll bring the boss back so she won't yell at us. Huh? Are we back? Nothing, my queenness. Okay. So. Thank you for everyone that participated. Now, this is what we call skinned over. Skinned it's over. It's dried, sort of. It's dried to the touch. I don't get any paint on my fingers, except the stuff I already had, right? But if I were to squish into it because it's thicker, it might. So what you're going to have to do is that you, you, we know it's dry enough where you can kind of be careful, right? So basically, so, you can apply on top of it. You're not going to be mixing into it. Yeah, anymore. you're not going to be mixing into it. But I've got enough where I can layer on top, right? And I'm seeing a few things I want to touch up as long as I'm doing it. Does that make sense? So as long as I'm doing it, um, put a little brown with my blue here. A little blue and brown, a little bit of burn umber and um, white, kind of the color I want. And I want to make sure I'm going to come right next to this door here. Maybe a little more white. I wanted to just make sure I had that right. There's some blue. And just just kind of touching stuff up a little bit that needed it. I can add a little more of this color. And I want to come right up to the end widen this door up a little bit right there like that. So you can still go back and... Um, and add a little bit of this and that, right? Does that make sense? Because when you dry stuff, it has a tendency to dry a little bit darker than your earlier intent. So here we go. Here we go like that. Here's our window. Okay. We'll just play with that a bit. I want a little bit. What I love about these brushes is you can do such a thin line. And um, you really got the. I'll just do a little bit of that to indicate more window than uh, than than he has because we, we, we're only doing part of the painting, so we have to do a little bit of ad-libbing here. Okay, so um, I want to make sure that I've got this wall. Um, there we go, like this. Just keep bringing this up like that. There we go. All right, so he's he had a little bit darker in here, and we can do that like that. Just I'm just dragging paint over it, and this is where layers help. You know, you can just barely touch it, so you have something like that. And then there was something kind of like this. It's just a little bit of separation on this door between the house and the and this door right there. Okay, so all right, so now what I want to do is. Um, uh, let's just play a little bit. Let's take a little bit of yellow and um, magenta, mostly yellow, white, and magenta like that, right? And I want to just drag over a little of this color over my texture right here. Maybe put a bit of white in it. Right there. Just just touch it. You can go, if your palette knife is um, work is dry, you can then go back with a brush. Now this is the trick. You don't have to be that good with a palette knife because you can go back with your brush and you can add highlights. See, I'm just using the brush right here and I'm going to just, you know, the things are a little bit lighter on top. So if I do something like that and say, okay, so here's my yellow. All right, I want something a little bit lighter coming over the top of this. If this is dry, I have the ability to do that. See what I mean? Uh, bring some grasses down if I want, or if I felt like I didn't have enough light in my foliage, say even here on the window, I could go ahead and add some with the brush, and it would still look like there was texture with a palette knife. This is that's the key, you guys. It would still look like there was texture. 
And that's that's what we're go going for here. See, because, you know, wherever there's a light, there's a dark. And we know that, for instance, this window is going to have some lighter green stuff. But I can tap over that and I can take, the, I have the benefit of the texture without having to do it all with texture. Yes and yes. So I'm going to come back here and tap in some light going up the side of the door, even down into here on this door. Okay, like that. Could say there's some light. And again, it doesn't all have to be palette knife. So that lets you off the hook a little bit, doesn't it? Don't you think so? Now, what you have to kind of watch for is painting uh, wet complements. So what do we mean by that? Well, a complementary color, I think I have my color wheels somewhere here. I have color wheels. What do we do with them? Well, they're usually, oh, here's one. Okay, so here's your color wheel. So complementary colors, you guys, are colors that are opposite each other. Purple's opposite yellow. Um, red is opposite green. Okay, so if you want to paint red flowers, you can't paint them on top of wet green because they'll go all muddy on you. So people always say, well, how do you know when to dry? Well, <laughs> dry, dry colors that you're going to receive complementary colors on top unless you want to gray them. Yes and yes. Yes and yes. So, hey, Mary would like to know, are there very many ODG being gal artists? Uh, sadly, there are a few. One of the ones we just got through doing in our academy, I don't think we have that picture I've showed you, is Mary Cassette was one of the big ones. And she hung out with the big guys. And they allowed her to paint... Um, children and moms and stuff like that. She did a couple landscapes. and But basically, women were not encouraged to do this. There are a few. There's a tremendous uh, female Norwegian artist. Apparently, Norway wasn't quite so nuts about stuff like that. Um, and um, there's been a few others. But basically, um, uh, goodness gracious, there is a late, there was a lady sculpture artist, an American woman, who did fabulous marble sculptures that are around the United States, got no recognition whatsoever. Women just weren't heard. Just shall I get on my high horse about that? Hmm? Might as well. Well, I have one, because it makes me mad, kind of, you know what I mean? It just does, John. It makes me really mad, because women were just not... One of the reasons people say, why do you sign your name cook. Why don't you, you know, in your paintings, why don't you do ginger cook? Well, one of the reasons is because, you um, don't know if it's a boy or a girl. because if they don't know if it's a male or female that's painted it. And back when I started painting, there was a huge amount of prejudice against female artists as far as, you know, professional, you know, once somebody liked the painting, that was one thing, but Everything else being equal. Now, dry brushing a little bit of light in this doorway. See that? Just dry brushing as you put a little bit of paint, wipe 90% of it off, and then just lay your brush flat and just put this on like the like you were putting lotion on someone that was sunburned. Barely touch it. Okay? So then we don't have a big club. All right. So now here's where we can start using even more gels. Okay? So here's some, um, here's some semi-gloss gel. Yeah, and I think I have a paper plate around here somewhere that hasn't been used, do I? You had a whole stack of them, but... I had a stack. Where did I put the stack? Did I stick them under here? Did I stick them here? Well, oh, I love the preparation that goes into these videos. I have no idea where it is. Paper plate is. Right, what do I got? I can put this on. Oh, tell you what, I'll just put it on a piece of canvas. Good enough. With a piece of canvas. Here. Let's put it on this. Oh, that beautiful background. Well, it'll have a different background now. So I'm going to use this as a... I'm going to put some gel on here. Don't have much in this jar left. All right. So now uh, this is called extra heavy semi-gloss. Okay. And I want to add some flowers to this picture. Okay. So I'm going to take some cad red and a little bit of white. 
and a little bit of yellow. Yeah. And now uh, let's drop the cap, but that's all right. We'll get it later. There's a little here. Now, don't want to mix it up too much. Now, here's how you use the gels. I can go up to, put some magenta in that, oh, a little bit oranger. There you go. I don't want to mix it up too much, right? I can go up to 50% gel. And this will keep, if you mix up, if you're somebody that, you know, paints a lot of landscapes, you can get little jars and your gels will keep. So if you mix some colors, they'll put them in little jars, they'll keep. So I want to say, I'm going to just use the edge of my brush here. Let me just roll that off my brush here. I'm going to just, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop down, just going to drop down some colors on here like this. Just drop it on top of those. A littler brush is better. It's like one like this is actually better than the one I just showed you. This was something like this. I'm going to drop in some colors. Just and I want a little more white in these. So probably the easiest way to do that would be to bring some white over to this. There. Now, I want a little. I want these to be a little bit lighter, because he did more more salmon colored over here that are coming in. Roll it off your brush, put it on the tip, and just drop it like cookies. Just barely touch it and drop it. And if you want to, here we go, a little bit more of this gel in here. These will, roll it off your brush so it's just on the tip, okay? Something small. Just touch it. Okay, now I'm going to come over here like this and just do a few over here. I want it a little bit redder. I want these to be redder. Because remember, I'm going off the bad photo, not the good one. You see, I'm going off of, I want to go off the good colors, not the faded out ones. Yes. So I want these to be a little bit brighter. Like that. And again, you probably wouldn't use this much because so you could you again you could put this in a jar. Chances are you would paint a flower this color again. Um, I would say that that's a pretty good guess. Again, roll it off the brush. If you have to, wipe it off the brush and start again. Just clean the brush off completely and start again with just on the edge, right like that. That's probably as effective. And just tap it. Just tap it and drop it because it will want to stick to these right here like that. Okay. And then I've got something a little brighter down in here. A couple. Okay, so those are those. And then um, I wanted some white ones, kind of blue ones. Let's see, let's get some more gel out right here. It's probably enough. And I wanted some blue ones. So let's say blue and white. Let's just get some, get some of this white over here. And a little thing of blue. Okay. And maybe a little bit of burnt umber, just a touch to kind of tone that blue down so it's not so bright. And here's my gel. OK. 
Okay. Here's some white paint. Okay. Kind of roll it on. Now just take all this off the brush and then just start with this, right? And I want to say right up in here, I've got these pretty white flowers that have a little bit of the blue tint to them. They're mostly white. And again, if you didn't have the gel, you can put this on top of what you've already done. Okay. And and get away with quite a bit. Okay, like this, unless it is. Well, these look like hydrangeas to me, maybe. And I think I want some over here, too. Maybe growing. I, I'm going to put a few more. I'm going to plant a few more flowers because I can, right? <laughs> How's that? I want a few more flowers. There's a little ultramarine blue. Here's a few more flowers, and we're going to just... Let's just wipe all that off the brush and start again. Just put it on the edge. Do you just find the that corner. the gel alters the color in any way? No, gel does not alter the color. Well, it depends. Um, if you don't, if, yeah, it's going to be trans more translucent if you don't do a, a if you don't. That's why we did semi gloss. If you don't put a lot of paint in, it'll be very translucent, right? So it'll alter the color depending on how much paint you do, but it's not going to turn blue green or anything. Okay. All right, let's just do somebody over here too. I think somebody needs to live over here. Again, because I've changed the painting a little bit, I can get away with a little bit of this, um, a little bit more, like taking a little bit of artistic license here. You like that word, artistic license? And um, and suggesting that um, uh, you just happen to be going by when there was more blossoms, more blooms. Yeah, it's, yeah. Just I, I want I want this want this door to be lighter. It's just not light enough. When everything dried darker on me, it's just and it's not just one particular color either. So here we go. I'm just gonna suggest this door is a little bit lighter. Let's put some green going up it too. There we go, like that. So that that looks a little better to me. And then this was more of an ultramarine blue here, right like that. And then we had some of this green. Now you can come back again, like I say, you can come back with a brush and drop it on too. You don't have to use a palette knife. You can use a brush and gel to drop on uh, color. You don't have, again, you can come through here, for instance, if you felt like you didn't have enough dark, you could come back and tap on a bit. There's just, there's no rules on this. There's no, well, I did a palette knife, but I cheated. I used a brush. There's no cheating. So silly, right? There's absolutely no cheating on this at all. It's just, um, did you, um, do we need a little dark in here, underneath here? There's usually some shadows. Need a few more shadows back up in here, maybe. Something like this. And you can even come back and, um, you know, use a liner brush if you wanted. But let's just say we had some more flowers here. So let's just take some white and um, yellow. It's just a little bit of light and yellow. I want some sort of light yellow flowers in here. They're kind of white, but they're not, right? Gonna put those in here too. Because I have the texture, I can have a really nice paint. It's a, big, it's a cute little painting. Doesn't again, it doesn't have to be exactly like his, but if you're talking about how would I paint this? Okay, which again, you would change the flowers depending on what you put in it, right? But how would I paint that? Depends on, you know. Can, can you try it small first, right? I mean, absolutely, try it small first. Here's a little bit of yellow white here. You know, that's what I would tell you. So try it, try it small first. Um, have fun with it. We'll see what I like magenta. Do you guys like magenta? 
I don't know. Now, some of you, for instance, if you were, you know, this is a guy, so there are absolutely no pink flowers in his paintings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there are none, right? And you don't want to get too clever, because if you get too clever with too many colors, so I don't think pink would be good, but perhaps we could do a, like a purple. So here's like some blue and magenta, make kind of a nice mauve purple. And I think you could certainly, um, you know, have those colors in your garden. Maybe smaller ones. Just you could tap some in here. Like they're, they're growing. But do them in groups. Don't do polka dots. Okay? So you want to do, do your flowers in in groups of color. Um, you know, like for instance, here's some darker ones. And you, you could put some in here like that if you wanted. Just say that I want something growing up my walkway with some purple flowers. And that that can be pretty. And then um then start with a lot little bit of light on top. Like that. Do it, you know, I mean if later you decide you don't like it, just come back over it with green and try again, right? I I think we need some purple over here, maybe a vine growing up. This house. Yeah, there you go. Let's grow something up there, right? What about over here? We don't we didn't do a lot over here, but um and again the center of interest is our door. So um you know, here's our door, and then here's the inside of our door jam, like that, kind of. So, I don't know if we want to do too much more of that, but we could, what else could we do? Um, could we lighten up something here, or, oh, I know. Let's do some lighter, lighter green here, just with our brush now. But over this texture, just glob it on, right, like this, just, you know, just swirl it around, right? There we go. That's it. So we don't have to plant anything. We're just going to use enough paint on the brush where... There we go. There we go. Ooh, that's pretty. I have a few little other colors in there. Look at that. That's nice. Ginger gets all excited about stuff like this. As I can see that the little tiny bit of colors. This is why palette knife painting can be so much fun. You see, you feel a little bit of those. You felt a little bit of that in there too, didn't you? Just and you know this is to my friend Sylvia who lives in um, uh, down under. Uh, down under, not under. Um, if you put a cat here, Sylvia, you're going to change the center of interest, which is over here. <laughs> <laughs> just don't do it. Boy, you're just really nailing her, aren't you? <laughs> don't do it, Sylvia. All right, now here I can come back here. Where well, this is cad cadmium orange. Now look what happens when I drop a little of that straight out of the tube on that. See? Huh? How cool is that? Yeah, yes we had a few yes. more donations came in while we were painting. And I'd like to thank uh, Anna Maria. Thank you very much for your donation. We had another one come in through the Venmo system from Megan. Thank you very much, Megan. Oh, thank you, guys. We appreciate you, that. We most appreciate it. And another one came from Anne Marie again. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Just add a few coming down here because, because I mean, I would if I were planting flowers and people say, "Well, you have flowers at your house, do you?" No, we travel. <laughs> we don't without have without weeding them. We don't have any. But if I had flowers, I wouldn't stop there. I don't care. You know, I mean, if you went to, of course, this is a pretty, this looks like everybody stopped. This house um, needed a little TLC, didn't it? There you go. So you see how I keep, do you see how once I've got the texture, I'm so good to go with the rest of this? You just keep plopping on top. You just keep plopping on top, right? And you're fun. So we, you can have. A lot of fun with this. Let me just get that out of the way. You can have a lot of fun with a painting like this. And if you want to do the complete big large painting of uh, that as Hassan did, um, again, here's the here's the larger version, right? If you want to do that, this version. will be on our website. We don't have it on right this second, but give us till tomorrow, please. 
will have the larger painting, the full image of this, if you want to do this. So what good sizes would they do for this, John? Maybe. Well, that's proportional to 8 by 10, so it's either 8 by 10 or 16 by 20, in which you crop it accordingly. Yeah, see, so you could do that. You can do that. So this might be, you know, again, you can see where um, he had these sort of white flowers. Here, now let me just wipe my brush off and go right into the white paint, right? I can go right over these, even with sound effects. Sound effects. There, see? We can go right over these. We can do stuff we got. We have the power of the brush. You can change your whole world because it doesn't matter what anybody else has got. You've got a paintbrush. So you may not be able to get this effect in your garden, but you can certainly get it in your, um, your paint, in your, in your paintings. And I'll tell you what, how pretty would this be 48 by 60 in front of your, you know, on your dining room wall? Or this one. You know, as an artist, you have the ability to tap paintings for all seasons. You're the man for all seasons. You could be the artist for all seasons. People say, well, I run out of room for your house. Take some down, put up some new stuff. Impress your neighbors. Anyway, so we want to hope you take a moment now and subscribe to our um to our channel, uh, and, and I hope you've liked the videos. I hope we certainly we have some thumbs up and likes. Put these in your playlist, share them with your friends, let people know we're out there. We've got some fabulous, couple hundred videos, three or 400 videos even on YouTube. So many ones. If you like palette knife, check out the playlist we've got for palette knife painting and so many different palette knife techniques. This is a very fun, simple one. Um, in uh we're going to be um in our uh next could you back out for a minute john you know i can't i'm well, sorry i lost that control right now we lost the control so yep. i guess so i can't um, back out very far this is our newest academy release that we released this week the sheep in the um uh you know in the winter it's called this and and these are the kind of lessons that um every week we have something different in the academy for the uh red and uh, purple members and uh, and we're going to be adding for you guys that are orange and and above we're going to be adding some different things that uh, I want you to look for stuff I want to do some 10 minute fast things for you guys to you know buff up your painting skills so we're going to be adding that look for those in our academy soon and again uh we got some likes out there I hope John don't we oh yeah we got 283 likes thank you and, I even give one. So and the question, the question I would ask you um, th th this time is, uh, did this video inspire you to try to paint, paint more with a palette knife? And um, again, I want to give a shout out to the uh, uh, that Texas high school, Braceswood, Texas. And um, uh, thank you guys very much for uh, uh, watching our channel and for sharing it with your students. Uh, wait, and, wait, we have one more donation come in from Julie. Thank you. She's using the PayPal system. Thank you, Miss Julie. Thank you very much. And I hope this was fun. And next week we'll we'll do something really different. It'll be different than this. So keep keep this channel um, on your mind. Watch for our newsletter and join our free Facebook club, Acrylic Painting with Ginger Cook. And because we're always putting up announcements and it's a good place to share your work. Good. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Ginger Cook, the queen of color, with a blazing brush at the speed of light, and a blank canvas, and a hearty yes and yes, the queen of color, Ginger Cook and her sidekick, John Little, teach you to paint with acrylics.